everyone welcome to a red hot Brighton yes hello everyone this is the last word it's just myself who's do, doing these videos down Brighton today other people are at work can't make it money wise it's a lot of money to get, get down here and um, pay a lot of money basically to travel and stay over and what have you but Newcastle have came away with another clean sheet. That's the positive from today. This is the last word. We're going to break down uh, the lineups, have a look at first half, second half, and we've got some little bit of clips from inside the ground as well. And we'll also hear from Eddie Howe a little bit later in this video. So we are sponsored by One Football, who are pushing us and promoting us around away games this season. And if you want to check up, please do uh, hit this QR code, which you can see on your screen download it link is in the description as well keeps you up to date fantastic app if you are sick of searching for news on twitter sick of searching for other articles it pulls them all in together as one is for you it's dead easy dead simple but yeah download it it's free so let's get in, let's begin with brighton's lineup then so uh brighton's lineup obviously it was the same great win for them last weekend at old trafford and yeah, it was a fantastic win, wasn't it? And they were splitting the passes open against Manchester United. There isn't any real reason why you would change that side. So if Potter did, I would have been really, really surprised. Let's take a look at Newcastle. So the tune, it was the forced one, which was Matty Target had a dead leg, which we found out in the build-up. And Dan Byrne against his former side. And he was playing out in the left-back, which meant Sven Botman came in at centre-back. That was the only change. Of course, we know John Joe Shelby is out injured. And um, it, tell, it tells me one or two things, you know, if um, Dan Burns being considered at left back, Javier Manquillo is only just coming back from injury. It's not being played. Paul Dummett is probably behind him in the pecking order. And it looks like that Matt Ritchie won't be used there this season, thankfully, because the amount of times at the start of last season where he was uh, being caught out at the back post numerous times. Uh, so it looks like Dan Burns will move to set left back and... One of the, wh whoever will come in at centre back, which was Sven Botman. We'll talk about uh, Mr. Botman a little bit later. Uh, I want to talk about the temperatures. Um, as you can see, I'm red hot here, and it's and it's rare that I'm like in shorts in, a, in an away day. There was very very little fresh air around here, and I'm not, you know, putting all on the excuse, excuse why Newcastle were tired. I did say in the match reaction, it was a large factor in it. I still believe that. But there was hardly any fresh air where we were in the wee end. Imagine what it was like pitch level. So we had two official drink breaks. And when a player went down injured, you've seen a few of the players going over the touchline getting some fluid because it is, it is really, really hot here. Like, really, really hot. And uh, there was an incident with one of the Brighton fans. The medics had to go over. I think there's been an incident in the away section behind the goal. I was literally, I say at the match vlog, I was literally towards the left of our fans, next to Brighton's uh, fans as well. And there's a couple of incidents, and I think everyone's okay, thankfully. But, yeah, I just wanted to point that out because it's absolutely red hot. I felt we looked tired, kicking up towards the opposite end where we were. Sanchez didn't really have any saves to make, first half or second half. I'll say maximum was really, really poor giving the ball away numerous of times and he wasn't even tracking back which Dan Byrne I wouldn't say Dan Byrne struggled at times but Dan Byrne had to Joe Linton had to keep coming across to cover Alan St Maxman I think I was a bit worried by that on the other flank um, Mickey going forward was great loads of fantastic touches flicks showing midfielders and defenders up for me he was the better winger today in particular first half Almiro was man the match possibly for the outfield players today and Callum Wilson didn't have anything and this is this was the same story. I think it got the same story. It got worse second half. In fact, shadow of a doubt, we got worse second half. We just got so tired. We couldn't barely. We had a, probably a spell of about five minutes. That was it. That was it. Did Santos have anything much to do? I think he, even one of the saves that he made was an offside, so it wouldn't go down as a save. I can't remember. But on the other flank, Nick Pope. Nick Pope. Had a good few saves, in particular that second one where he just palms his arm out in the second half. Just spatula arm, great save. And a couple of blocks as well, but you know, Brighton, I think they had a great opportunity from six yards and where they knew, where they knew signing. Uh, the Asian lad pulls it back and, you know, it's, I think it might have been gross, sides foots it and it goes wide. And that was a real, that's probably Brighton's best chance. And of course, Brighton did have one 
as I've nearly forget, yeah, I cleared off the line queue in Trippier the first half as well. So I forgot about that, the match reaction as well. That was um, a great chance when it was deflected and it was going to go in first half and Trippier clears it off the line. So I think Brighton for me, you know, as the game went on, deserved to win it marginally, maybe, I don't know. I think so. The substitutions, I think, I felt we needed them a little bit earlier just because we were absolutely knackered. You could see it. Um, I would have probably made all, all, all of them. Um, give a little bit of freshness, yes. But Brighton looked the far fitter team today. But it's the same old story. If Brighton don't have a decent striker, then a striker, they'll be quite maybe on the outskirts of Europe potentially. But Neil Mope is probably their best striker and he can't start them in it. But look, I think it's a point gained for Newcastle today. I really do. I think it's a massive point gained coming away. As I say, the, the top of the year, uh, the show. Uh, the one football that will tell you that Brighton should have won it but it's two clean sheets in a row now for Newcastle that's a positive we're unbeaten it's four points from two games you would have took that to start the season I predicted a point I said a score draw got that slightly wrong but got the score right uh, draw right sorry but um, early doors in the Premier League let's see what Eddie Howes had to say Matt Target's not involved I'm guessing that's an injury yeah he got a a dead leg last week uh, on his hamstring. We felt it was just a dead leg at the time, and then on a scan, it just showed very uh, minor damage to his hamstring. So, yeah, he misses today, but hopefully not too long. Look, it won't be Newcastle's best performance of the season. We know that, but it's a long way for the fans. I'm going to walk away because there's a wasp nearby, and it flew off. That's fine. It's flew off. I'm petrified of the fuckers. So, four points. A small check on the league table, shall we? Because it looks positive, doesn't it, for Newcastle? Uh, obviously, there is more games over the weekend, uh, which we know about. So, if you're watching this video after Sunday, Newcastle are likely to be lower down the league. But yeah, look, it's a long journey. Um, I, it's a three-day event for myself coming down here. I'm obviously making a day of it tomorrow as well. Um, but the people who got on the court, just Jesus Christ, I couldn't imagine how hot they've been today. Seven hours here and seven hours back to see a nil-nil draw credit credit to every single fan who's put money in the pocket and came down not everybody can but especially the people who are on the coaches because I wouldn't have done that but you know we'll talk finally about the squad depth yeah squad depth so Newcastle don't do we have it no talked about this briefly on the match reaction you look at that bench today is there anyone who can change a game make a difference not for me Jacob Murphy Sean Longstaff and Chris Wood not for me. Are they the guys to make a difference? Not for me. Take us to the next level. No, change again. No. Yes, John Joe Selfie was missing today. Joe Willock might have come off the bench and maybe a like for like. And really, the best player that we've got, who's probably a first team player, is Mark Dubravka on the bench, and he's not going to play, is he? So I think um, Eddie Howe needs backed, and he will get backed. I think the club I just find it a little bit difficult. I think the players and the squad will be strengthened. Uh, we've still got two and a half weeks. I don't think it's panic stations just yet. I think we'll, a lot will happen in the last week of the transfer window but yeah that is it that is it uh, you've had the match reaction you've had the last word to, which is now the vlog uh, you've had scoring the players of Sam you've had the you've had uh, the drive down earlier on as well uh, loads of videos for you here on NFTV remember download the one football app it is in the description from the MX Stadium all the way down the other end of the country see you later everyone